one that has two departments. We can look at this a couple different ways. If I hover my mouse over it, if we look that way down on the status bar, we'll see that the link is to detail.aspx question mark EMPID equals one. All right, which is what we want it to be because one is Mike's department number. Or I'm sorry, employee number. I hover over Joe and it says detail.aspx amp ID equals two. If we pick another department, Sue, Sue's link says employee ID equals four. Mary's link says employee ID equals three. So we've done part one of the job. That is, we have gone in and we've put a link on that page to go to that second page and to pass the employee ID. Now we haven't written that second page yet, all right? But now we got a fighting chance to make this work, right? Because um, we're passing to it the employee that we want. All right. Now I'm going to go in for good measure. And I'm going to go into the database and add the, the column for the, the uh, image. Even though we're not really ready to do anything with that yet. So I'll add employee image. And it's going to be a text field. Don't be tempted into thinking it's an OLA object or anything like that, or an attachment, or a memo field, or anything like that. It's going to be simply a text field. We'll go in, we'll fill those in later, but I just wanted to add that field right now. Okay. Now, we are back to needing to create our second page. And we know the name of it, detail.aspx. All right? Yes? Um, I kind of missed. In the database, you called the field employee ID, and that's what you put in mm -hmm. the list. But on the... Um, on the query string, I called it EMP ID? Yeah, where, where, I missed where that came from. Essentially, it doesn't matter. As long as, in other words, what, what you're saying is it doesn't match up with what is called in the database. That doesn't matter because as long as that second page is expecting it under a name, this isn't like going to the database. So on the query string, I can call it anything I want as long as the page that makes it calls it the same thing as the page that gets it. All right, so page one is going to send it to page two, the employee ID. All right, we need to give it some name on the query string. I could call it anything I want to. All right, it doesn't have to be the actual name in the database because the only reason I'm putting that field on there is so that page one can pass it to page two. As long as page two knows the name to expect it under, then it'll work. All right, and you'll see that in a second. You'll see in a second where we haven't done page two yet, but we'll see in a second how page two is going to grab that field off of MP ID and then go and do something with that. All right. So let's go in and let's create our detail page. <coughs> and I'll call it detail.aspx. I'm going to create a SQL data source for this page. I'm going to configure it. I am not going to create a new connection. I'm going to create use the connection that's already in my web config file, which is the HR database. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do this. with a custom SQL statement. I'm just going to write the SQL statement just for practice. 
So my SQL statement is going to be select star from employee where employee ID equals what? Well, it equals a parameter, right? We can't hard code a value in. We don't always want employee one. We don't always want employee two. So just like we did in the department on the other page, we're going to put a question mark here indicating, hey, we're going to give this page the number of the employee that we want them to look up. So I'm going to say where employee number equals, or I'm sorry, where employee ID equals question mark. <clears throat> All right. That's very similar syntax to what we have in the previous page with, the, with employee, except on the previous page it says where department ID equals question mark. Because on that page, we're looking up by department. All right. On this page, we're looking up by the specific employee ID. <clears throat> now, just like in that page, we have to say, hey, where do you get your value from? How do we know which employee we want to pull up? We've said we want to pull up a specific employee whose employee ID matches some parameter. We have to specify where that parameter is going to get us value from. And when we did the drop down with department ID, we picked control. And we said, yeah, that SQL statement is going to get its department ID from the department drop-down. In this case, there's no drop-down. Where is it getting its value from? It's getting it from the query string. So we select query string. Now, what is the name of the field on the query string that we want to use? This is where we put in EMP ID. This is what has to match what we created what we put in there when we created the link and formatted it. All right. So when we create that query string to have EMP ID equals, this guy has to know, hey, they used EMP ID to pass the employee ID. And again, it doesn't have to match the name of the database. You could say it's good practice to do that, but I deliberately wanted to demonstrate that this is different than the field name. This is simply the name that you're passing it under. All right. We can test our query. If we give it an employee ID of 1, it pulls up that person, sure enough. So we can hit finish. So our data source is all set. What we need to do now is we need to supply some way to see this. Because remember, this is just a data component. Excuse me. This is a data component. So it contains the results of that SQL statement. We have to visually represent that some way. We can represent that any number of different ways. In our case, we know by definition there's only going to be one of these, right? Because there can only be one employee that has that employee ID. So we really don't need a grid view. A grid view, again, is good for showing a list of items. What we want instead is we want a details view. And what's the data source of the details view? Well, it's going to be that SQL data source that I created. Now, a grid view and a details view, working with one is very similar to working with the other. We can do a lot of the same things. We can auto format this guy. fields if we want, just like we did with the other one, and so on. So now we should be able to go, should be good to go. So I will run this. I'm going to, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right mouse on default, and I'm going to um, set that as my start page. 
so that no matter what's on my screen, it'll, it'll call that default page. Excuse me. Actually, I don't want the default page. I want the department search page. So I'll go and do that one as my start page. Now let's go and run this guy. It's going to pull up my department page, department search. Now notice again, the link for this guy is EMP ID equals 1, EMP ID equals 2. The other way we can see it, by the way, is if we do a view source, we can see that for Mike, it generated the URL, department ID, or employee ID equals 1, detail about ASPX, AMP ID equals 1, AMP ID equals 2. Now, when we click on this, we bring up Mike's information and everything about Mike. We go and click on Joe, and we bring up Joe's information. All right. So what were the keys to this? All right. In terms of new stuff that we went over today, there was creating a link. All right. Remember, creating a link consists of some things are going to be hard-coded, some things that are going to come from the database. In our case, typically what we want to do is if you want to pull up one row, is we want to pass whatever the primary key to that table is. So creating a link is one. On our second page then, we need to be able to use the value in the URL that is from the query string as a parameter in the SQL statement. And we do it very similar to what we did when we had the parameter in the dropdown, except we say, hey, use it from the query string. Last but not least, we decided to use a details view rather than a grid view, simply because we know by definition there can only be one employee for a given employee ID. Questions on this? All right. Next thing we have to do is do the images. I don't feel like looking for images, so I'm going to exhibit my drawing ability in paint. save it in my folder in anywhere but the app data folder, right? Because if it's in the app data folder, it's not going to get served. All right, so I'm going to put it just in my directory root. We can move it around, all right? And I'm going to call it joe.jpg. All right. Let's go and... Erase Joe. I don't know why I'm doing this, why I'm taking this much care with it. <laughs> taking this much care to make a ridiculous looking drawing. If 
you notice the resemblance, it's because Joe is one of my brothers. So I'm accurate in that respect. So I'll go and save these. Now, what we need to do is we need to put these in a database, right? Because we have to be able to associate that image with that person. So, let's go in and stop debugging here. Let's go into the database. I'll go to employee and employee image for Mike is Mike.jpg. Employee image for Joe is Joe.jpg. Now, one thing that you should be careful of, especially when you're dealing with images, is make sure you have the right extension. All right. Um, so I'm going to go and verify that my extensions are correct because if I look at this, all I see is Joe and Mike, and they are JPEGs, but I don't know what the precise extension is could be JPG, could be JPEG. So I'm going to go and turn on the file extensions. And sure enough, they're both JPG. All right. So, okay, so we have it in the database for those people. All right. Now back to work here. What I'm going to do is... I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the fields on this guy. And kind of like I did with the link, I don't want the name of the image. I want the actual image. So I'm going to get rid of the, the name of the image, the name of the image which is in that emp image string. Because I don't want to see the text. I want to see the actual image. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm then going to go and say I want an image field which I can add on to the end. And what is the name of the field? You could say, you know, image. What do we want the alt text to be? Well, person's name is probably a good idea for the alt text. Where, where is the URL for this image? Well, it's in the field called amp image. Let's see if that works. Now let's go and run this and see if, if it works. There we go. Click on Mike. And sure enough, there is Mike. Click on Joe. Sure enough, there is Joe. Now what if we click on one of the people that doesn't have an image? Well, nothing shows. All right. We can do like, like they do in... in, in you know, in, in high school yearbooks, not pictured, blah, 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 blah. We'll do that in a second. Didn't we select an alternate text? Yeah. That should have showed up? No. Okay. Here's why it didn't show up. Because there's no image associated with it, it didn't even make the image tag. So if we look at this, if we do a view source and look here through the table, has the header or the title of image, but inside there, there's nothing. All right. Let's compare that with looking at one of the guys that does have an image. If we do a view source here, and we look at that, title of image, image source equals joe.jpg, all equals joe. So if it creates the image, it puts it as an alt tag. But if there's no image, it doesn't even create an image. It doesn't create, like, a broken image tag. All right. 
Okay, so now what we can do is we can specify a, you know, no photo available image. So let's go back into paint. Really, this is just an excuse for me to get back into paint. And I'll go in and put just a generic I gave him two black eyes, all right? <laughs> Camera shy. One of my favorite uh, jokes in the TV show Arrested Development is when they were trying to describe how boring someone was, and they said under her picture in her high school yearbook it said, no picture available. <laughs> I guess no fans of Arrested Development in here. That is your homework if you have a Netflix subscription, is to go and watch as much Arrested Development as you can. All right. So I'll, I'll just call it no. All right. And save. All right, let's go back here and if I go and edit the fields for image, I can put in a null image URL. So I can say no.jpg. Or I could go and put some text in there. All right. So now if we go and look at one of those people that doesn't have an image, we'll see the generic no image available. Or again, if we prefer, we could look at the text. We could put text there. All right, questions about any of this? Yes? Um, what you just said about putting text there, does it have to be text in an image file? No. No. In other words, I could do this. Rather than show my, my goofy little no picture available image, I could go here under edit fields and I could take out no image URL and I could put the text oh. no picture available. So now when we go and run this, if I pick one of those people, it won't show the, the dummy image. It will show the words no picture available. Probably a better way to do it, I guess. I don't know. Yes? All right, this is a stupid question. So then if there's no picture available, you don't have to put anything in the database under that person's name. Correct. Like, to say that photo. Correct. Therefore, if it's legal to not have a picture available, then um, you should make that field not a required field in your database so that you could put nothing in it. Yes? If it was a required field, could you put the known JPEG field? You could, but that's a lot of work. Uh, it seems to me like, again, one of my, one of my guidelines about what a good practice is is to not lie to anyone, all right? Don't lie to your program, don't lie to the database. So how is this lying? Well, the image column is supposed to contain a real image of a person. If you don't have an image and you lie and say, well, I do have an image, it's the image of no people, all right? That seems to me to be sort of a fluke and a lie and, and all that. Because what if I did want to go back then and I decide, you know what? If there's no image, I don't want to show the, the dummy little ghost silhouette image. I just want to put the words. 
Well, now you're stuck having to go and clean out your database and get rid of all those fields for no image. Better, let, better to let the program do that. If you don't have an image, don't put an image in. You know, If you don't have a phone number, don't put a phone number in, as opposed to putting some dummy value in that means, well, you know, if this is the case, what that really means is blah, blah, blah. What that relates to is a database concept that I don't remember the name of. All right? But essentially, the gist of it is that every field should only mean one thing. All right? So, for example, let's say that you had a field for zip code. All right? And maybe you think you're clever and say, well, I have a field for zip code, but if I put all X's in that field, that actually means that they're from Canada, for example. All right? Well, then that zip code field actually means two things. It's a flag that tells you whether they're Canadian or not, and it tells you what their zip code is. And in this case, if I put the no image in there, um, that actually would be two things. It would be the image or a flag that says I don't have an image. I'd just as soon just leave it off. Again, probably wasn't worth that long of an answer. <laughs> but it does bring up a, a good question. But you see that especially in old systems, by the way. You know, um, you know, um, One system I worked on, there was a three-digit customer number. But if you entered in customer 999, that actually meant that such and such. Or if you entered in 998, that actually meant such and such. That is a mess to deal with. All right? You're better off not lying to your database and, and having flags, for example, that would say, hey, that's what this means, and so on. Questions? Yeah. Uh, so if you, instead of putting your pictures in the main directory, oh, you have them in the folder. Yeah. Do you just change the database text? You could do that one either way. For example, let's, let's go and move these images to the images folder. All right. And I'll tell you which way I prefer to do it. Which, of course, means it's the right answer. And if you do it a different way, you'll get a lot of points deducted. No, I'm just kidding. This is, this, is, this is a matter of personal preference. Let's go and let's go and create a folder called Images. And Let's go and put those images in that folder. All right. So now it's in a folder called images. There's two ways that we could do this. All right. The one way is to go in the database, in the employee table, and simply change the images to images slash mike.jpg. And that would work. All right? Because, again, you're giving the path to it. It's going to create that image tag. It's going to put whatever's in that field and plop it as a source in the image tag. So if you have directories in there, fine. We'll put the directories in there. The other way to do it is this. The other way to do it is this. Right now, if I look, it's not going to work, right, because I moved the images. All right, so this is broken. I could go in here and edit fields, and I could go and do something very similar to what I did with the link, right? With the link, remember, part of the link was hard-coded, and part of it came from a data field. Well, here, part of my image URL is going to be hard-coded, that is, it's going to be the word 